I'm still trying to process that trailer. It was insane. Maybe it was just me, but I feel like the second half of the trailer basically turned this into a, a farewell Aerith trailer. After watching this several times, I think I have more questions than answers at this point, which I'm totally cool with. I'm also starting to suspect something odd about Aerith. I get into all that and more in this video. Let's take a look at some of the new information we received and analyze specific parts of the new trailer. And guys, for all future Final Fantasy updates, theories, and other content, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out. Before diving into the trailer, let's begin by looking at the massive info dump we received. We have brand new images and descriptions of the Gold Saucer and Corral Prison. Referred to as the Gilded Paradise, the Gold Saucer is a resplendent amusement park on an epic scale. It is divided into seven areas called squares, each with their own unique attractions. One such is the Sky Wheel, which takes guests high above the saucer for an unforgettable view of the park and has proven to be a popular date spot. The Gold Saucer looks insane and I can't wait to experience everything it has to offer. Just looking at this picture, I spot Ghost Square, Wonderment Square, Chocobo Square, Speed Square, and Battle Square. Dude, this place looks massive. And if you look at Speed Square, it kind of looks like a tube you can drop down similar to the original game. Or perhaps those are elevator doors. It's, it's kind of hard to tell from this angle, and the other doorways don't really reveal much either. Maybe they literally teleport you to the square? I, I don't know, but I also noticed the three TV monitors advertising an event called Musclehead Coliseum Showdown, which is most likely the snippet we saw of Dio and Cloud. I'm pretty sure this will be a minigame similar to the pull-up minigame in Remake. Corel Prison is a sprawling slum that infests the base of the Gold Saucer. It's almost as if the saucer's glimmering facade acts as a beacon for vagabonds and ne'er-do-wells the world over, as they have flocked there in droves. So dangerous is the Dust Bowl, Corel Prison's slightly kinder sobriquet, that those who enter its limits are said to never return. It looks great, and I'm sure we'll meet our fair share of assholes in this place. I noticed this dude over here has a rifle, and possibly this guy too. Based off this guy with the megaphone, I'm sure we'll see some shitty form of leadership led by another new character I'll get to in a second. And what I mean by leadership is a group of guys running the place and calling all the shots. To the bottom right, I'm not entirely sure what the hell's going on. It looks like they're taking pictures or something. I, I don't know, but all in all, the gold saucer in prison look great. We have some new images of several characters along with some descriptions. First up, we have Vincent, a self-proclaimed security guard who hibernates in a coffin deep below Shinra Manor. This man of mystery is swathed in a red cape and boasts the genes of a monster, as well as a hidden connection to Sephiroth. Vincent looks fucking awesome, and I'm so sad we won't get to play as him until part 3, but it will be well worth the wait. I love the attention to detail on his design, and I really dig the material on his firearm. Well done, Square Enix. Sid looks great, but where are the cigarettes at? Maybe he'll actually fasten his goggles to his face at some point? I mean, that would make storing his cigs up there complicated from a design perspective. Or maybe the design change was simply because no sane person would store cigarettes up there due to the sheer discomfort it caused. I also notice he doesn't have his weapon in his official render, unlike Vincent. Will Vincent be the only guest member to fight with us like Red 13 in Remake? Perhaps Sid will stay behind and watch the tiny Bronco. The rogue pilot of reputable skill runs a shuttle service out of various abandoned airstrips. After Cloud and company flag him down, he flies them all around the globe in his beloved tiny Bronco. So holy shit, it sounds like we'll actually get to fly it. I noticed in the trailer when they take off in the tiny Bronco, they're not being shot at like the escape sequence in the original game. It's also likely the party gets shot at right after the scene we saw, but based on the background it doesn't really seem like much is going on behind them, so I'm not entirely sure if this is the escape sequence or not. Perhaps we meet Sid earlier and the tiny Bronco gets shot down later in the story? And notice how Sid works out of various abandoned airstrips. These will most likely be our landing zones in Rebirth. Dinah was once Barrett's closest friend back when the two used to make their living in the coal mines in Corel. Now he is a wanted man with a gun grafted to his left arm and his current whereabouts are unknown. We all know where he's located and I'm not ready to watch this scene play out. This entire story arc will definitely be one of the saddest moments in Rebirth. Dio is fucking ripped, just as he should be. Really nothing new in his description, so let's take a look at the next character, Dr. Sharon. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but I'll roll with it. For those that don't know, this is the doctor in Corel who reconstructs Tifa's sternum after the Nibelheim incident. After her condition stabilizes, Tifa is left with a doctor in the Sector 8 slums that performs a number of skin grafts to aid her in her recovery. In rebirth though, he's caring for the black-robed figures that stumbled into town and is attempting to uncover the truth behind their mysterious illness. And I'm willing to bet, if this truth is discovered, this dude will be dead in a matter of days. 
Next up, we have Solemn Gus, the sleazy kingpin of Coral Prison. I'm not gonna lie, I totally thought this guy was Mr. Coates. He's the guy in the original Final Fantasy VII by the lift that heads up to the gold saucer. And he very well could be, but maybe Square Enix ended up changing his name. They just look too similar for it to not be the same guy. And finally, we have a new look at Biggs. After surviving the fall of the Sector 7 plate, Biggs awoke to find that he is the last remaining member of the ill-fated anti-Shinra rebels, Avalanche. Having recovered from his injuries, he now seeks revenge against the company that murdered his comrades. In the trailer, we see Biggs and Zack discussing things, and I think we all kind of saw this meetup happening between them eventually, so no surprise there. But the biggest question still remains. What the fuck is going on with these timelines? I also want to point out Zack's dialogue in the beginning of the trailer. He's telling this to someone in a way that sounds like he doubts his very existence. He felt every bullet go right through him and suffered that pain, but is somehow still alive. It's almost as if he's convinced he should be completely dead, but doesn't know how or why he's not dead. I'll go into this a little later once we start talking about the trailer. Let's briefly run through some of the new moves and summons. We have a new look at two new synergy abilities. Cloud and Aerith have Firework Blade in which Cloud can unleash a ranged magical attack, and then we have a Tief and Kate's ability called Moogle Dunk in which she swings the poor bastard around and launches it at an enemy. I'd like to think Kate's would hop off his Moogle in time before impact, but after looking at this image, I'm not so sure. Both of these look pretty awesome though. New images of Titan, Bahamut Arisen, and Phoenix have been revealed as well. I'm going to briefly go over their final attacks upon leaving the battlefield, but I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to read more about their other abilities. Titan unleashes Earthen Fury, calling forth giant pillars of rock from deep within the earth. This imposing magical attack harnesses the power of nature to cleave your enemy's resolve. So this is different from the original because in the original he basically lifts up a slab from the earth and flips it over onto the enemies. This sounds like a major upgrade to me and I'm sure it'll be epic. Bahamut looks sick and its final move is Giga Flare, an extremely potent attack that sees the dragon unleash beams of magic from its wings and maw, burning any nearby foes alive. This is a move we're all familiar with and it's going to be so badass. Finally, we have a new look at Phoenix. It's worth mentioning Phoenix does have healing abilities and can revive incapacitated allies. Phoenix unleashes Rebirth Flame upon leaving the battlefield, which recovers the party's HP and spells a fiery death for any foes within its wide range. A single feather falls from Phoenix's wings, enveloping the battlefield in burning flames, after which the bird rises from the cinders to deal a final blow. So basically it sounds like one epic AoE and I'm all for it. We finally have more info on the relationships and building bonds with your allies. This probably has me the most excited out of everything. Hamaguchi has been putting a huge emphasis on building these bonds. This game is going to be an emotional roller coaster, and I seriously cannot wait. Cloud's actions and the way he responds to other party members while conversing with them will affect his relationship with them. With a strong enough bond, you may even reap some benefits, so whenever you're faced with a decision, you might want to think hard before responding, especially if it concerns one of your favorite characters. This straight up reminds me of Persona and I love it. Previous interviews confirm these bonds also help your synergy skills. I'm not entirely sure how it's all implemented yet, but it would really suck to potentially miss out on some synergy skills. I doubt that's the case, but we'll see. Next up is the Gold Saucer dates, and I have to say, moments like this is exactly why I'm probably getting into playing this game for, like, <laughs> the entirety of 2024. In addition to the date scene, we also got a good look at the play that takes place at the Gold Saucer. There's some interesting things to note here. Under the screenshot of Jesse, it says, Thanks to the latest in VR technology, the Gold Saucer's Golden Theater brings this play to life like never before. It's possible this is misleading, but at the same time, it's far more likely these dancers are actually just some insane hologram. I do wonder if the party will recognize her though. And like, will they try to talk to her? Will they realize it's a hologram? I'm not sure, but that could make for a pretty sad scene in my opinion. Here we have Barrett playing the Dragon King and Red 13 right beside him. One thing to note is, depending on your relationship with your fellow theater goers, the person playing Rosa may even change, along with parts of the script. Guys, this game literally screams replayability. Now I could be wrong, but it seems like the play will no longer be a part of the date sequence, and it's now more of, more of like a fun thing you do as a group. Your choices will affect who plays what in the play, as well as your actual date during the date sequence. It sounds good to me, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Square Enix also released a bunch of new screenshots, but the two that stuck out to me the most were these two. If you know, you know. 
This scene is going to hit like a freight train. And once again, the link will be in the description if you'd like to take a closer look at these screenshots. As I mentioned earlier, the very first thing we hear is Zack saying he's feeling every single bullet. He's telling this to someone in a way that sounds like he doubts his very existence. He felt every bullet go right through him and suffered that pain, but is somehow still alive. It's almost as if he's convinced he should be completely dead, but doesn't know how or why he's not dead. I suspect he's talking to Biggs and they start piecing things together that something's not right. I try to avoid theories for the most part because some people are so good at it to the point where it spoils the game. But I remember one of the more prominent theories and that was that Zack is actually still dead and his segment takes place in the livestream. So if that were true, does that mean Marlene is dead too? Was she killed in the massive tornado that seems to have killed the rest of the party? I'm not so sure. I still kind of think this is a case of a corrupted livestream and that most of the game we experience with Cloud & Co is an illusion based off memories. Square Enix keeps putting emphasis on the what is fact, what is fiction statement too. But I won't go into my theory in this video, check it out if you're interested. The next shot in the trailer is Bugenhagen saying their ire manifests once more. He's definitely talking about the Gi tribe and this totally takes place in the cave of the Gi. He then warns us not to underestimate our foe before us. It's hard to make it out, but if you look at this frame by frame, it looks like you can make out some details similar to the boss in the original game. The real question is, can we one-shot him with an X potion? I'm gonna say no, but if there's a chest right before the boss fight with an X potion in it, you better believe I'm gonna try it. I also wanted to point out the pattern on Bugenhagen. It's the same as the tattoo on Red 13, which is pretty cool. So this is the first look at Zack and Biggs speaking with each other. Biggs is asking what he's supposed to do now, knowing everyone else is dead. And what's interesting about all this is, Cloud is probably chilling off screen somewhere and Big should have no idea who the hell Cloud is. Or does he? It's, it's kind of hard to say whether or not they met. But if we're going off Zack arriving to Midgar with Cloud, then no. Big should not know who Cloud is. It'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. We got a quick look at Calm and some other new areas like the Haunted Hotel. I suspect this is somewhere in Junon because of Cloud's outfit. The next shot is on the ship and I love seeing these sailor outfits. I hope this is a soft confirmation of Barrett's outfit. The dialogue is very important here and it kind of makes me think of the live stream sequence. Sometimes, I don't even know who I am. I forget things everyone else remembers just fine. And know things I've got no right knowing. Cloud, it's okay. You saved me before. Now it's my turn. But whether or not that part takes place in Rebirth is yet to be seen. It's possible this conversation takes place in the house in Junon, or maybe even Nibelheim. But I'm also wondering if Cloud and Tifa's dialogue are spliced from two separate parts of the game. Tifa's dialogue kinda does sound like it could be from the livestream sequence, but Cloud's dialogue sounds like it might be after one of his flashes. He's seeing these future memories and perhaps he's referring to seeing Aerith's death. Usually when Cloud has these moments, he's grabbing his head and the party's kind of concerned and wondering about him. So it's possible somebody asks him if he's okay. Something tells me the dialogue here is from two separate moments in the game. There are definitely countless other things he could be referring to, but this dialogue really stuck out to me. And I gotta say, I love the emotion in his voice when he's saying this. You can almost hear the fear in his voice. He's unsure of his emotions and his memories. Sid looks great, but I'm a little concerned about his dialogue. He doesn't exactly sound like the angry asshole we all know and love, but I'll refrain from judging for now because I'm guessing this is a decent amount of time after we meet him for the very first time. As far as his concern for helping Aerith goes, I speculate this is in regards to reaching the Temple of the Ancients. He knows she needs to go there and he wants to help her reach it. If you remember in the character description, it mentions him flying the party all around the globe. So at what point will the tiny Bronco get shot down, if at all? Regardless though, I definitely think he wants to help her get to the Temple of the Ancients. Marlene's dialogue to Zack is very concerning and does she mean it literally? As in, she wakes up in Zack's world and is immediately killed? Or does she mean once she wakes up in Zack's timeline, Sephiroth kills her in Cloud's timeline? If it's the former, who's the scary man? Another Sephiroth? A possessed Cloud? Genesis? I don't even know. It seems far more likely she wakes up with Zack followed by Sephiroth killing her in Cloud's timeline. But her phrasing really makes you wonder. And who does Marlene not want Zack to tell? Is it Cloud or Elmira? <laughs> There's just so many questions. We can assume Aerith shared some sort of knowledge with her in the remake, which is why she knows this. Hopefully it explains what knowledge was shared, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. And finally, we get to the new theme song segment of the trailer. 
I swear this is a goodbye trailer for Aerith. Everyone looks so great in their costumes, and honestly, if we get to wear these costumes outside the gold saucer, I'm totally keeping that costume on Barrett. The shot with Zack looking over Aerith just raises even more questions for me, but not in a bad way. I still can't seem to make out where they're going with this. Once Sephiroth kills her and she wakes up with Zack, it would kind of confirm it's all taking place in the live stream. But again, like, why is Marlene there? Perhaps Aerith sends her back? Honestly, I don't know. And I suck at reading lips, so I won't even try to guess what he's saying here. I've seen some people mention he might be saying Moshi Moshi if it's in Japanese, which is the same as Aerith's hello. I'm not really seeing that, but again, I kind of suck at reading lips. And finally, I want to talk about this final shot of Aerith. We see the black feathers, and we can even see the whispers behind her. The background also looks different. Notice the railing is missing. So, I don't know if I'm going crazy, but I was going through this frame by frame and noticed something. I don't know if it's just me, but the look on her face looks like she's smiling at the end once she sees the black feather. I'm probably going crazy or just seeing shit. It's probably just due to the blurring or motion of the camera. But even when I'm not going frame by frame, I can still see a slight smile starting to form. And to be clear, she does kind of smile in the original, but I feel like this smile is hitting different. And this got me thinking about crazy stuff I don't even want to be thinking about because it's ridiculous. And then I was reminded of another suspicious scene in Final Fantasy VII Remake when Cloud hears Sephiroth's voice and looks directly at Aerith. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just, I'm starting to feel a little uneasy about this whole thing, probably for no reason. I'm, I'm like running off three hours of sleep at the time of recording this, so I'm probably just losing my mind over here. But what is the huge surprise taking place at the Forgotten Capital? Is Sephiroth or Genova leading the party to the Forgotten Capital as a trap? I just don't know what to expect anymore to be honest. I've seen all types of predictions on what people think will play out during this moment. From Zack saving her, to Cloud killing her, amongst a bunch of other things. I'm still not sure where I stand either after that trailer. I want her death to play out in the exact same way, but even if she dies we all know it won't be the last time we see her. We'll most likely get to play as her and Zack in part 3. I know one thing for sure though, we're all going to enjoy the ever living shit out of this game. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and please consider subscribing. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section and for my own sanity, please tell me I'm going crazy and making up this whole smile thing. I'll see you guys in the next video, thank you so much for watching.